Let's say, Angel, this is the weekly reading for Sunday the 22nd through Saturday to come the 21st. We're going to jump right in, begin with the dice and 29. Your choice, dirty movie, and yes, 29 is about spiritual partnership. Your choice, I realized a couple weeks ago, was is about the other person. So not you, not me, but the other person in a scenario. Um, it's their choice. And dirty movie is often about something that's like, um, it could be about sending pictures to, to somebody, pictures, videos, exchanging with your friends, your loved ones, a mate, um, uh, online dating. It could be about something going viral, something in the news. Um, I don't know, I've been talking about transfers of power that I had I started talking about a couple of weeks ago that I saw it coming and there have been some since I first said it. Um, there's another one this weekend. The head of Australia, the prime minister of Australia, it was under Australia had been under uh, like conservative control. Their, their liberal party is the, actually their conservative party. I'm going to say like down under and everything's topsy turvy there. Like even that. Like it's backwards. Their liberal party is their conservative party. Uh, anyway, the that liberal party finally lost, and the people are very happy because it's it's actually going to be a, a liberal party <laughs> that is now in charge. That the new prime minister is um, so you know said to be or believed to be um, a, a, a more progressive, I guess, and fair and open minded person. So their people are excited about that. But there was a transfer of power from these conservatives to that. So that happened again. And we could see other things in the news, again, viral or something that affects, you know, the nation or the country. I had also talked about going all the way back to um, six months ago. I started talking about what I was expecting to come after the Pluto return, uh, which was in February. Um, I said something happened with the grid, something could happen with gas, and, and now we see all that stuff happening. I was in the store last week, the grocery store, with my daughter, and they had um, like all these, like a, um, all this like uh, emergency food stuff on the shelves. Like for $50, you could buy this kit that had like basically like rations in it, you know, like as if we're in the military or something. And she said, um, why would we need that? And I'm like, hmm. You, you you never know. I mean, I think things are going to continue to happen. Um, despite what people say with the, on TV, on the news, um, I, I think we're already in a recession. It's not one coming. We're already in it. But some stocks are up. Most stocks are way down. You know what stocks are up? Energy, gas and stuff. Um, so things like that are happening. We may consider continue to see all kinds of crazy things um, in the news. Now it's my choice. So before it was your choice. Again, it was the other person. Now it's my choice or your choice. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, romantic dinner. Eat cake. Happy birthday to the Geminis out there. And congratulations and whatever else is appropriate for your other celebrations that you're having. June is about to be upon us. Is one of the biggest months for weddings and, and engagements and things uh, in the calendar. It's like June, February, December. Those are the biggest ones. Uh, anyway, last dice says no. cards looks like we'll have some movement in the area of romance and while I feel that the initiative is meant to be taken by the masculine I don't think it will be I think it will be by the feminine sort of like if you want something done right you got to do it yourself that's that she's gonna feel like that um maybe because it was your choice, as in their choice, as in the masculine, and they didn't make a move, and so she's like, oh, "Fine, I'll do it." That's well, that's the kind of thing I'm hearing. I also was visited by um, Mary this week, and this week, <laughs> and 
she said this is her she said this week is her week i don't i don't know what she meant by it maybe we'll see something in the car i should have pulled out her deck um maybe we'll see something in the car she had a feast day last week friday the 13th was may 13th was the first of six per year um feasts of our lady of fatima so you know 19 uh, may may 13th 1917 she first arrived appeared to the three kids nobody believed the three kids so she said okay i'll come back next month and then you know june 13th and then june 13th all the people followed her all the townspeople followed the kids i mean um because they're like let's see if this is real and then you know a bunch of people came got healed uh, i think she helped a little boy to walk that was lame um all kinds of stuff like that. And then she came back, of course, July, August, September, October, through October, and she does every year. Um, but yeah, she, told me, she said, this is my week. And I don't know what it meant yet. So I don't know if something will come out in the cards. But the reason I say I think the feminine, well, not only my hearing things, are your, are your gifts up? I remember I talked about <laughs> going back up. Like I, I needed, I felt I needed my... um vibration to go back up it's it's going back up um anyway soulmate compatibility companionship your best life partner so we have that and the next card is in reverse it's called stuck so stuck is finished then we have the five of cups in reverse and so five of cups in reverse is you, know, you remember when kim k said like get off your ass and work Get off your ass and work. That's the kind of thing, the, the, that's the kind of energy that the Five of Cups has. It's like, I'm done like wallowing in self-pity and feeling sorry for myself and oh, woe is me. And I'm going to get off my ass and do something about it. Get off my ass and work. But there's a woman in this card. Or what looks to be a woman. It's a man in a dress coat, a petticoat, if it's a man. I think it's a woman. So this is why I think the woman's going to get up. Well, this is in part why. Another reason is also we have the Queen of Cups as opposed to the King of Cups showing up. And the Queen of Cups is somebody who often puts herself out, you know, she because she's so concerned with taking care of everybody else and comforting everybody else and making everybody else feel good that she sometimes forgets herself, puts herself out, goes over and above for other people and maybe doesn't tend to herself. So... I think even though the feminine deserves to be tended to and for the masculine to do the work, I just feel like, and he, I feel like he's meant to, if we want this to happen, but I feel like she's going to. Anyway, the Queen of Cups is most directly a Scorpio. If as a court card, it's representing an actual person in your life. It can also, of course, be a Cancer or a Pisces or someone that's not a water sign at all. They're just, you know, maybe dealing with something emotional, emotional issues. Or maybe they are particularly intuitive. Or maybe especially this week, they're particularly intuitive or psychic awareness and whatever. Um, they are also compassionate, loving, giving, and psychic. This is a time of deep emotions and heightened intuition that you can trust completely. Be mindful that you don't ignore your own needs while caring for others. So I, I feel like she may do that, the feminine. And then we have the three of cups. So it will be positive. It will be a celebration of uh, uh, re being reunited with someone or something that we want to be reunited with, that we've been apart from for a long time, probably. Um, so these could be soulmates in separation. These could be... Um, The sirens sound like crying. And I promise you my windows are closed, so we really should not hear it that loud, if at all. But sirens have always seemed to come through no matter what. Um, yeah, my windows are closed because I think it's still like 90 degrees, even though it's like midnight uh, in New York here. Anyway, um, Three of Cups says that we're going to be reunited, have a positive, um, you know, uh, reconnection with someone or something that's going to make us happy so like we find something that we thought was lost or misplaced um and it could be something simple like where do i put my ipods you know like you know how you misplace like little things like i just have them where do i put them and maybe they dropped out they're so small they're so light maybe they dropped out of my pocket and i didn't even notice and they're gone forever no you're gonna find them you know like that kind of thing um <clears throat> 
but it usually is something that you've been apart from for a while. So it could be something that you, yeah, you thought was, you thought it was just gone, gone because when it comes back or it can be a person reunited with that person. Something we don't know. You know, it's information that's hidden and we just have to like trust the flow and go with the flow. We don't know what's on the other side. It could be a surprise. Again, like with being reunited with something positive or someone, po you know, some uh, having a positive reconnection. It makes us happy. Um, this is not like the ex you never wanted to see again. It's not that. Anyway, important psychic insights. Events behind the scenes. Release fears that hold you back. Major Arcana card 18, the moon, represents the Archangel Haniel in this deck. Um, and I don't know why I'm being meant to mention the Archangel. I normally don't do that. Um, hmm. Represents the sign of Cancer also. And the moon actually, um, well, in the tarot, actually, the moon represents the sign of Pisces. Earth's moon rules the sign of Cancer, however. So Cancer may be significant. A Cancer, rather. Significant. And then we have the Three of Swords. Great sadness. Take time to heal. There's a need to forgive yourself and others. So maybe the reason that, you, that there was a separation from something involves some sort of party or, or someone involves some sort of party of three. Um, sometimes the Three of Swords can just itself just be representative of separation for me. Um, regret, resentment. This could be about feeling that, again, something is lost forever or someone is lost forever. But there's something you don't know. You don't know they're on their way back. Here's another three. It's a positive three, the Three of Cups. It's happy. And it's going to make you feel emotionally good. But it may require you to get off your butt and do something in order to get it. We also have the Knight of Cups, which is reverse two. As well as the Eight of Pentacles, which is a card of doing the work, putting in the work. Is there a male on here? No, this is a female too. Just wondering because I'm like, he didn't want to do the work is what I was getting. Even this knight is a female. Nine of Cups too is in reverse. And then after all those... We have the two of cups. The knight of cups for me can often be about an X. Like the queen of cups, there is energy of Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Even in reverse, the nine of cups is about wish fulfillment and the eight of pentacles is about putting in the work. Let's do some shuffling. I think what else I want to tell you. Another reason for the moon could be, I said this reading goes through the 28th, not long after that, the 30th, maybe for some people the 29th, depending upon where you are in the world, we have the new moon in Gemini. So it's not in, it's not really part of this week's reading, but it's soon, very soon after. So that could be another reason maybe. Then I think it was last week's reading, I was trying to remember if Mercury went direct on my birthday, and it does not. <laughs> I remembered after, and then I looked it up to, to confirm. So it is June 3rd, which may, I guess will also be part of next week's reading, um, where Mercury goes direct in Taurus. This week it leaves Gemini and goes into Taurus, and then it goes direct next week in Taurus. And then... June 13th is when it re-enters Gemini. I wonder why that's not going to be Mary's week. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on on that day. It seems like Mercury enters Gemini. Our Lady of Fatima. What else? I don't know. Uh, what else did I want to tell you I don't remember to tell you while I'm shuffling.
lovers. New York is doing a lot of celebrating today of uh, Biggie's birthday. His DJ, Mr. C, is on this fairly new radio station, Overall Energy, the Seven of Pentacles, um, called The Block. And so he had a party. Then they actually had a party um, at the Empire State Building for him and changed it, changed the colors to red and white and stuff for him and like put like some, like a crown shape the top um had a party they made biggie metro cards which is like our train passes <laughs> stuff we use to get on the subway they put his image on them just really making a big deal for his 50th birthday i think it's pretty cool That's not what I wanted to tell y'all though. I don't remember what else I wanted to tell you. Maybe nothing. Maybe nothing. I don't know. When something comes up, I'll let you know. <laughs> Overall energy here. Seven of Wands. So we've got Appreciate. Seven of Pentacles reversed. And Seven of Wands upright. Card most directly representing us this week is temperance in reverse. Our surrounding energy, close friends, family members, co-workers, everything is fine. Except it doesn't look like it. Some friends may be super dramatic. What are you? Is everything okay? You're not answering my test. Are we still friends? Like just really dragging it? Maybe you're dealing with your own stuff. And they're like dragging it is what I'm getting so far. We'll talk some more about it in a minute though. Uh, work in finance. The fool in reverse. Love and relationship, the five of pentacles in reverse. So again, it's that sort of like, I no longer feel like you're feeding me crumbs. I no longer feel left out in the cold. Things have gotten a lot better and I'm over this feeling, similar to the five of cups that we've had before. Um, physical health, the empress in reverse. Infertility. Um, we'll talk more about that in a second, too. Could be just be menopause. Maybe somebody's period stops. Like your period is supposed to come and it doesn't come anymore. We'll talk more about it in a minute. Something was coming coming back in, so I, I stopped again. Ooh, the two of wands in the placement of the spiritual energy. Could be connected to twin flame journeys. All right, so starting with our overall energy, the Seven of Pentacles. This is a card that's about return investment, right? Like um, similar to the card that comes after it, the um, Eight of Pentacles, which is about putting in the work, getting the reward. You know, this is like the beginning stages of putting in the work or making an investment, um, giving energy, you know, something and then yeah the next card the eight is like more of the the actual effort and labor and whatever but with both cards eventually you're supposed to reap what you've sown get again a payment um you know some sort of compensation for what you put in return a return on your investment even if it's in reverse okay so this is what we're waiting on expecting um deserving and I think in most cases, now this can be like good or bad. It's very karmic, you know, as, as in based on our karma. Like you're getting what you've been putting out is what the card is, is saying. You're just likely to find that whether that's a good thing or not, um, at least to, to some degree, 
you're getting back what you've given out in the past. And that's just it. And that could be why temperance, the card that most directly represents us, is also in reverse. Because it's about some sort of imbalance or things, again, being upside down. It's funny because I started out talking about things being upside down with um with Australia. And Australia is not upside down. It's down under. But I, I did say like upside down and topsy-turvy. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if something upside down and topsy-turvy. I don't know. Now I'm going to be trying to figure out what, what the heck's going on with Australia all night. <laughs> um, oh, this belongs in reverse. The sun is beneath her. When it's like this, the sun is... Um, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to put more. Like I said, I'll be up after this reading. I did it again. I put it right side up. This card's supposed to be in reverse. It's supposed to be in reverse. I'm going to have to figure out what that's about. Okay. Um. Temperance. <laughs> temperance in reverse is about imbalance. I mean, temperance upright is about balance too. The, you know, no matter what, the card is about balance. And when it's like this, uh, all kinds of relationships, especially. Uh, so it could be business relationships, familiar relationships, you know, as in your family, um, friendships, romantic partnerships, such a, you know, big relationships with coworkers or whatever um, that you may not consider business relationships because they're like your equal or whatever. But people at your job, they may or may not be your friends. Um, all your relationships could need some sort of attention or they're demanding attention. And that may be why this everything is fine. Card is sitting here next to the temperance. Like I said, people may be trying to get your attention. Like, oh, I need you. And they're, they're being dramatic. And they're, you know, you got your own stuff that you're dealing with, though. And, and they're, like, trying to get your attention as if they have something huge going on. And you're not being there for them. And everything's really fine. Like their situation's not even, they probably don't even know the half of it in terms of what you're actually dealing with in your life. Like you got so much on your plate and they think that they're dealing with something. It's, it's, it's nothing. Um, but our relationships are like demanding attention. Um, you know, it's going to be different for everybody. You know, maybe this is also tied to your choice and my choice. You know, um, some of us are going to are really going to want to like pull back our energy and maybe actually do uh, make an intention, do a ritual, whatever it is, however it is you do it to pull back your energy uh, or maybe, you know, in a 3D way you want to like a more literal way pull back your energy like just you know not deal with people not see them not talk to them or whatever this week particular people um i mean it's like overall all your our relationships are probably you know going all right like generally speaking it's possible though that we've been like getting signs about something or someone or um, maybe ignoring some like constructive criticism about ourselves that could actually be helpful to us. And this card in reverse can be suggesting that maybe we not pay so much attention again to the, the outside forces um, and focus on ourselves. So this could also be tied to that Queen of Cups, who again nurtures everybody else. And you know, let me I'll just do it myself. I'll just take care, I'll just handle it, and doesn't necessarily take care of herself. And this can be a good time when we when we, you know, for us to like look at our own deeper personal issues and see if I guess and if so how 
these things may be standing in our way and causing blockages for us. Um, and if we decide that they are, how do we move past them or work through them or maybe somehow implement them or integrate them into our lives so that we're not, so that they're helpful and we're not affected by them in a negative way. I hope, I, I don't know if I'm making sense. I hope I am. The idea now is basically to do what it takes to find balance in yourself, in your relationships, um, with your goals, the stuff on your plate, the things you have to do. And we should be able to ask for help too. If you find that this, if you feel like there's somebody that could help you with some of these things, we should be able to ask for help also. Like maybe the masculine should actually be doing something. Maybe if you are in an actual relationship, a feminine and a masculine, you know, but you've been still carrying most of the load. He's not helping you with the kids. He's not helping you with, the, you know, you got a job too. You may need to have a sit down and say like, I need help here, here, here. And it's possible it's not doing it to be an asshole that he just doesn't realize and you have to ask. You got to like bring attention to it because they're, again, craving attention and, dra and draining you of attention. You got to bring attention to the fact that what you're dealing with is heavier. I'm going to jump around because I'm, I'm just getting something about this. I said before, maybe menopause. They're saying like, not really menopause because menopause isn't a health issue. Menopause is part of life. It, th this would be an imbalance, like a hormonal imbalance or vitamin deficiency or something that's causing um, some sort of feminine problem, like maybe one cycle not coming. It's not because you're pregnant. It's because it's a, it's a problem, a, a concern, a medical issue. Um, that has to do with imbalance of something. So whether it is your hormones or again, your vitamin levels, blood sugar, um, I'm seeing something, I don't know what this is. All right, let me leave that alone for a minute. Maybe it'll come back, come to me by the time I come around. Um, so I guess you, you get the idea of what I'm trying to say about temperance, right? I'm going to try to um, move on. So everything is fine. I already explained what it means. I mean, this card, it's modeled after the Ten of Swords, as you can see. It's in the it's in this deck, um, the Modern Witch Tarot. I don't think it, if I remember correctly, like when I open my decks, <laughs> I may look at the booklet like the first time or whatever. I don't even know what the booklet is at this point. Um, my kids gave me these cards for Christmas, I think it was. I don't remember there being a description of this card, but it's always said to me, like, it's not really the Ten of Swords. Like, it's, it's every, it said, it's everything is fine. It says everything is fine because everything is fine, you know? Um, and if you're feeling like this, it's in your head. You know, if you're feeling like you got Ten Swords and you, it's in your head. If you're feeling like you were betrayed or somebody lied to you, it's in your head and you're making stuff up and you may, you know... You could potentially accuse the wrong person. Not you. This person in your cipher, in your surrounding area. So a family member, um, a romantic interest, a mate, a child, a parent, you know, a sibling, a co-worker, somebody around you. Maybe feeling even like you betrayed them. You broke their heart. You hurt them. You stabbed them in the back. You horrible person, you. And it's real, It's just them being dramatic and ridiculous. Um, temperance in the tarot represents the sign of Sagittarius. Could be involving a Sagittarius. For me, also the sign of um, Aquarius. Because this is a water bearer, and you can't tell me it's not. Nobody's going to tell me this is not a water bearer. This angel standing in a pool of water, pouring water between two vessels. It's a water bearer. <laughs> so this is Aquarius. Um, I'm 
maybe a lot of rain for Australia or the water rising or something. Uh, let me leave that alone for now because I have to remember like the clock is ticking as, as, the, as something is recording, like minutes are ticking by. So I try to not get stuck in like things that I hear or see in the middle of a reading, but sometimes they don't cooperate with me. And they do it even though I'm I'm talking to you guys and I'm recording, you know. I'm not live, but I'm live recording. So we don't have room for edits and stuff here. Anyway, I'm going to move on to, um, I did it again. This just belongs in reverse. <laughs> I'm going to move on to The Fool and Working Relationships. So, um... In the area of work, you, you you could be having like a lot of ideas and things, plans for work, how you could make stuff better at, you know, wherever you work. Um, for example, what? Uh, the supply chain is all backed up. You got a way how, you know, and you can make things, logistically, you can make things run smoother in the factory where you work or, you know, at Walmart where you work, at Amazon where you work. You can make things run, run faster. Um the trucking company where you work and, or you could, you know, you found a gas station where the diesel is cheaper than all the other ones, you know, and they're not gouging and you figured out if you take all the trucks there, it's going to save the company money. I don't know. You know what I mean? But <laughs> you have like really, really good ideas and plans and you're like afraid to put them out there. And this is, a, you know, the, the fool is about faith, right? Having faith, taking a leap of faith. So this time you need to have faith in yourself. Again, where it's about being in balance. Our overall energy of this temperance in reverse is that we're in balance. Um, so we're, we're lacking, you know, maybe some confidence, some esteem here. And we're, we're not having faith in ourselves. And you need to, you know, have that faith and give life um, and, and voice to your ideas and it could really really pay off um like in ways that you may not have imagined again this is about pay our overall energy is about something paying off you may be feeling like you want to start doing something new a new position a new job maybe this is for somebody that's not working or even that it could be time, you know, for you to like go off on your own, start your own business. I feel like somebody wants a food truck. And you should give these things some thought. You really should. I don't know what food truck came on, but I heard it. But I don't see anything about food here. She's got a pot. She's watering. Um... I guess that could be food. Growing your own food. Now's a good time to grow your own food, for real. I told y'all about the rations they were selling at Costco. Um, in finance, possibly not have anything to do with work. This, this food in reverse has like a warning. There could be some like unique or, or special opportunities or ways for you to pay, no, not for you to pay off, for something to pay off. I'm listening, I'm listening, yes. <laughs> for something to pay off for you. And it would be because of previously work or some groundwork or something that you laid before. But... Like, before you sign on the dotted line, this is probably because of Mercury and Mercury retrograde. Not the best time to be with, you know, con dealing with contracts and whatnot. You should, like, you know, like, check the math, run the numbers. Um, how do you say? Like, just check things out. Do your do your own research, like the people say on the Internet. Uh, and do your due diligence. Because it's possible that, you know, all is not as it appears on the surface. And that's not to say that if you get an opportunity, I mean, because right behind this seven of pentacles, 
we do have the four of cups, you know, so it's like an opportunity. And that's not to say that it's not going to be a good opportunity, but check it out because it could be a, a really bad opportunity that could fuck you. You could get stuck in something, right? Um, your money could get stuck, tied up, like these people are tied up. Major Arcana card 15, the devil, represents the sign of Capricorn. It's behind the Four of Cups, the opportunity. So for some people, I mean, it could be, you know, good to take an opportunity. And for others, we need to be aware. So just for everybody, we need to double check before we jump into it. So moving on to the Empress in reverse, Major Arcana card three represents the sign of Taurus where Mercury is moving to. Where the um, from where the sun just left because it entered Gemini two days ago, um, and what else? Where Uranus, rule of the sign of Aquarius with this Temperance card, is located. Also, rule of the sign of Libra and that of Gemini, where Mercury just left before it went back into Taurus. This Empress is, sur is surrounded by like crystals and stuff. So that could be a good mean means of healing for somebody. Um, so traditional tarot. There's something like, like somewhere in your body, in your mind, could be your subconscious. Like your body knows what's wrong with it or where there's a concern and maybe sending you messages either in the form of pains or pangs or again, something in your subconscious dreams, blur, you know, like quick pieces of information that you're not quite putting together. You're not quite hearing or seeing yet. You might need to get quiet and listen. Maybe that's what the crystal healing is about. She also has got a bunch of pillows with her. So maybe you need to like meditate in order to hear. And if you're able to do it somewhere outside, you live in a climate that's conducive to going outside, the trees and the grass, you should do it there. Um, I'm doing it again. She belongs in reverse. You might need to get quiet. Sometimes like information having to do with our health can come to us in what seems to be like really odd or bizarre ways. How, like what? I'm trying to think of an example. I told you I ended up in the hospital the other day and I got information that was, you know, super positive. I got information that as somebody who has suffered with GI problems, you know, I'm doing great on the inside, you know, um, and probably better than I have been for a while. My pictures look better than they had in a really long time. So it could be a positive thing for some people. I guess, again, it's, it's like your karma paying off. Have you been a good person? Have you not been a good person? You're being paid back or you may feel like you're being treated by the universe the way you've been treating it or the way you treated it in the past. And that could be coming out on your health, too. Um, but something, some kind of information or means of getting information could be triggered in a weird way. You just need to like pay attention and maybe even look for clues. I 
how do you look for clues? But I don't know. So I'm getting like look for clues. Um, as to how you can do a better job of 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 maintaining your health. And that's the traditional tarot meaning. Um, I don't feel like I explained it right though. And I feel like for, for most people that are really going to be impacted by it, it's not the traditional meaning other than it, it's more about this need to, I guess, figure things out. Like getting in touch with your symptoms your issues your problems so uh, meditating on how you can do even if it's like okay like you want to go on a diet um I'm, I'm i'm thinking of that because someone's approaching and people start talking about summer bodies you know so nothing having you know not not picking on anybody not being judgmental about anybody just it's just a common thing uh, in May and June for people to want to go on a diet. Um, but maybe you've tried to diet before and it hasn't worked for you or you haven't been able to stick to it. So you need to meditate to listen to your body. Or maybe you have, you, maybe you feel like you put all your effort into it and it's still not working. So you need to meditate and listen to your body. Could be again, a hormonal imbalance. Um, could be a, a, a um, Vitamin deficiency. My stomach issues that I had been dealing with, um, like I said, that I recently discovered were a lot better um, than I thought. Um, it caused me like malabsorption. Like you know, I wasn't I wasn't absorbing my vitamins and minerals properly because my digestive system was off, was imbalanced. Right, so. Um, it could be something like that. Some sort of imbalance that you're dealing with is causing you this other issue um, with your health. And so by thinking about it, maybe by, by quieting, you know, getting into a quiet space and, you know, giving it some time and thinking about it, you can figure out what you need to do about your health, like what's really going on with your health, what areas need attention, and how you could go about giving them attention. And last but not least, as I mentioned, the Two of Wands is considered the Twin Flame card of the Tarot, right? The Soul Flame, the Soul Mate or a Soul Mate card and the Twin Flame card of the Tarot. Um, and of course, that's not the traditional meaning because people haven't been talking about Twin Flames. Twin Flames have been around like by different names and I've gone over some of that um, and I'm going to get back into more of that because I recently asked if people wanted me to start um, you know, like reading the, the lost books of the Bible and the book of Enoch and all that kind of stuff again, like I used to on my channel. And the, the response was yes. So we will talk about that some more and I'll point out places where, they, you know, the scriptures talk about these types of connections, but they were not called twin flames. So obviously if it's the twin flame card of the tarot, that's definitely a more modern, um, you know, meaning and not the traditional tarot meaning. But the traditional tarot meaning is very close to this, right? Because it talks about a spiritual partnership. Remember I said temperance is going to be about partnerships and stuff. This one talks about a spiritual partnership, not necessarily romantic, but a spiritual partnership with, you know, just one other person, um, you know, can be like really, really helpful to us right now, beneficial to us right now. We could, you know, support each other spiritually. Maybe we could trigger each other in a positive way, inspire each other spiritually um, if we're able to connect with somebody else who's on a similar wavelength to our own. Um, if we're not, then it's also the card, again, more traditionally does also say that we need to remember that we need to always be like in spiritual partnership with ourselves as well too. And this could be tied to the queen of cups also. And again, remembering to nurture yourself and take care of yourself. Um, you know, so it'd be nice if you could partner with somebody else. <laughs> and again, it's happy romantic, but maybe a, you know, business spiritual partnership, 
Again, it's crossing the full, you know, you decide to start your own business, maybe selling crystals or something, or, you know, doing yoga, meditation, whatever. All of the above, combinations of those. Um, or perhaps some of us can connect romantically with a soulmate, with a twin flame, and just... This... Mary said it's her week. Huh. I wonder if it hasn't something to do with that. Like, you know, um, because this week is also, Jesus has a feast day this week too. Not that they were romantic partners. I'm not trying to be gross or anything, but I'm just thinking about like an ultimate divine feminine and an, you know, um, and an ultimate divine masculine both ascending or appearing in their ascended form at the same time or during the same week. Because Mary's feast day is about her showing up as an apparition and as a vision to other people. So that would have been her ascended self. And Jesus' feast day this week is the ascension of the Lord. So it would be him ascending into heaven as a higher vibration than himself as a human being. And there's a lot of things I'm going to have to spend more time on after I turn this camera off. Um, and you guys feel free to do so too. I mean, that's, I don't mind, you know, I, I'm sharing with you and maybe you can add something as well. Um, but yeah, very, a better week than normal which I, I don't think any week is a bad week to partner up with, you know with with somebody spiritually that you're in line with um but this is a particularly good week for it i'm gonna pull a couple of the uh cards from the twin flame tarot to no i'm gonna do another spread that's what i'm gonna do should i do both if i can quickly i don't know this is in reverse but there's no reversals in this deck so i'm turning it around but it's stuck block third party silence barrier Shift your focus to clear the energy. So it goes with this it goes well with this temperance that's also in reverse. Um, you know, the imbalance is can be what's stuck. You know, there's like an imbalance here in this traffic. There's no flow. Oh boy. That, maybe I'll find that other thing this week. It just really like disappeared into thin air. The same way things pop up here out of thin air. Never mind. Uh, surrounding energy. <laughs> joining the 10 of... See, this too is in reverse. Uh, and it's joining that um, everything is fine card. And this is about forgiveness. So maybe where somebody you know thinks that you, again, you stabbed them in the back. They'll be all right. If you don't give them the attention that they, you know, if you say, listen, I got a, I got a lot of stuff I'm dealing with too. I'm not ignoring you. I don't hate you. Whatever. It's not about you. This, you know, has nothing to do with you. It, it's me. <laughs> it's just not you. It's me, you know, um, tranquility, peaceful, uh, peaceful mind and heart, freedom from the past. That, yeah, it could also be about something that, I mean, somebody in your surrounding energy could also be dealing with something from the past, too. Or maybe the reason that why they're being dramatic or why they're paranoid um, is because of the past, you know. So whether they need to forgive themselves or you or both, they'll be all right. Work and finance. Release. Release those ideas. Share them. Loosen your hold, relax, unwind, release fear, anxiety, and doubt about yourself. And go after that other position or that new company, your food truck, <laughs> whoever that's for. Do it, do it, do it. Love and relationship, joining the five of pentacles in reverse. It's also in reverse. Um, but again, there are no actually no reversals here. It's transformation, breakthrough, reinvention. You're ready for the next level. Yes, yeah, so you're tired of, again, oh, woe is me. 
um, or um, you know, feeling left out in the cold and you're ready to move on to the next phase. Physical health, joining the empress in reverse. We have potential, fulfillment, risk, achievement. Your potential is limitless. In working and improving your health and in making yourself a better person, reinventing yourself, healing yourself, limitless. You know, people start out, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Then when you lose the 10, you decide you want to lose 20. You lose the 20, you decide you want to lose the... I want to put on a little muscle. I don't want to get too big, but ooh, you know what? I like this. I want to lift some more weights. I don't care if I'm getting bigger. I like this, you know, all that kind of stuff. People, a lot of people, they, they say, I just, I started doing this. I only wanted to, you know, I set my goal here and then they just surpass it. So that's the potential. And then last but not least, um, the two of wands in the, in the position of spiritual um, partnership, uh, spiritual he, uh, health, rather. It is all about spiritual partnership. And we have perception, red flags, delusion, perspective. See through your own false beliefs. You know what I'm getting? That this is where somebody is afraid to get into some kind of spiritual partnership. And maybe because they're feeling ten of swordsy. And that's all fake. There is no reason to feel ten of swords. Forgive yourself. Forgive the person. Something happened in the past. Let it go. Don't be stuck. We're moving on. It's just your perception. It's your way of looking at it, but it's not reality that, you know, there's something wrong here and you should go for the partnership. And that's that. Now, I think I'll leave these cards with these. I won't add them back to the deck and that way I won't have to reshuffle and I can still do the other spread I wanted to do. I'll just take these away. This other spread is just going to be traditional Queen of Swords, Square of Nine. Like back in the day. Isn't that interesting how the masculine is all animal tarot, the feminine is all animal tarot, and the shared group is all angel tarot, even though these were, you know, shuffled and stuff. And then we'll take this. We'll do the same thing. So I am going to turn them around if they're in reverse. Overall energy, again, is appreciate as a reminder. And from this deck, the overall energy is the seven of wands. Defending yourself, defending your beliefs, your decisions. Crowning the masculine, we have the four of swords, four of winter. And it's paired with a card also called winter. So this could be about air energy, too. Thoroughly think things through before making a decision. Continuing to overanalyze isn't going to get you um, air energy thoughts, things in your head. Um, continuing isn't continuing, continuing to overanalyze isn't going to get you any closer to a resolution. But meditation and prayer, like what we were just talking about in terms of the physical health and maybe even the spiritual health, will bring you the answers that you seek. Four Swords can also be about, um, if it's not about making a decision, it can be about restoration, recovery, like graduating up from the Three of Swords. I'm getting back to myself. As can Temperance. Temperance can also be about restoration, recovery, being made whole, um, collaboration, uh, compromise, meeting in the middle. 
all these sorts of things. So maybe you got to think on it first. You got to sleep on it. Hibernate. Let me take a few. You know, it's not just sleeping over one night. This decision is going to take me maybe you know a few days, a week, or whatever. I got to I got to hibernate on it, not just sleep on it, like we, like animals do in the winter. You feel out in the cold. You did, but you don't anymore. Remember the five of swords. I mean, the five of pentacles was in reverse. When it's upright, you feel out in the cold, but it was in reverse. So you don't anymore. You feel out in the cold, your answers arrive in winter. So I think your answers arrive not in winter, but by thinking about it. Um, like swords energy, winter, air. Four of swords can also be about planning a trip. Um, so that just the planning stages, thinking about it, getting your things together. And then like when the six of swords comes, you might actually be going surrounding the masculine the eight of swords so again more of this being in your head that winter energy air swords it's so easy to convince yourself that you're trapped when you really aren't trust that god will lift you to new heights and give you a greater sense of self-confidence if you first affirm your own freedom and you and this other person you're a soulmate, somebody with whom you're connected at a soul level, twin flame, whatever. Um, you're like you're mirroring each other. You're, probably, you're both feeling like fear and whatever. So if you fix yourself, they'll feel better. Or if they fix themselves, you'll feel better. You guys can help each other. Like, this, like in the other spread where it showed a spiritual connection is will be beneficial to you, will be helpful to you, will improve your spiritual health. <clears throat> so if we can get past the fear of coming together with this person with whom you're connected. Um, and even if, again, if it's not on a romantic level, if it's a friend, if it's a bit person like you're putting your business heads together, um, somebody that that's, whose vibration is similar to your own or, or perhaps higher and you can learn something from them, um, it's a good way to do that, to move beyond the fear and to go ahead and connect with that person. Even if you had pro you know in the problems in the 3D in the past or whatever, like if... You, if you have to move beyond ego or, you know, um, whether or not they're mad at you or they hate you, like, you know, be the bigger person, as they say, go ahead and do it. Masculine subconscious, we have unity. He wants to connect with somebody. You know, this card for me, yes, it is a card of, you know, well, first and foremost, it means it's about tradition, traditional values, traditional ways of doing things, traditional methods, Um but it's also like a romance card. People look for it because it can be about connections, spiritual connections, especially. Um, it can be about getting married even, higher institutions and things. Um, but for me, it's also about the people, places, and things with which we surround ourselves. And us having ascended beyond them sometimes, outgrown some of these people, some of these places, some of these things, their vibration is not likened to our own. It is not higher than ours. You know, we're just not on the same wavelength. We're not on the same page, therefore, you know? And so we want us to, we, this is like about yearning to be surrounded by people with whom we actually vibe, people who, um, you know, do have a similar vibration, whose vibration is stronger than our own, from whom we can learn something. They can be like a mentor, uh, and so, I, again, I think, well, I mean, so far, both spreads have said it. This is a good week to connect with people um, of your own vibration or, or, or better than yours. Embrace this time of deep spiritual growth. You may feel called to act as a mentor. So you may be the one with the higher um, vibration. Or you may want to find a new teacher or find a new mentor or somebody, you know, with a higher vibration than you, than yours, or spend time with others who are in a similar sacred path to your own. So again, collaboration, compromise, all of these kind of energies coming together. Um, Major Arcana card five, the Hierophant represents the sign of Taurus. Again, where Mercury will be moving back into while still in retrograde. And then we have split energy with this showing up with this card options unfocused multitasking decide what you really want and i think what you really want is to split from people <laughs> um who are just draining your energy 
and again spend your time with people who are on a similar wavelength to yourself crown in the feminine very nice ten of pentacles this can be about inheritances lump sum of money um property like a home uh, love relationships family feeling supported feeling protected feeling safe feeling security sense of security strong just good um contentment comes from knowing that your finances are secure and your family's material needs are taken care of it's important to honor traditions and it's nice that this is crossing the hierophant again the hierophant is about traditions so there could be some sort of family tradition you're keeping up um maybe maybe with um memorial weekend approaching because this will go into memorial weekend right um, there'll be some sort of family tradition, a barbecue or something that you do. I don't know. Uh, birthday, something maybe coming up. It's important to honor traditions and to have pride in your heritage and the accomplishments of your ancestors. Maybe specifically your home, family home. Maybe you're visiting or you're thinking about visiting the family home. Or this is about an inheritance for you or just feeling good um, as the like matriarch of your family or... Something cozy, warm, secure. You feel at home with each other or just being with another person. That spiritual connection that can be beneficial to you this week. Surrounding energy for the feminine, the eight of pentacles. It's the perfect time to learn all you can by returning to school, taking a seminar or conducting research. Do your best work and the law of attraction will bring you prosperity and career advancement is partnered with loss, loss of self and identity, discover your true self again. Somebody may feel really unhappy in the work that they're doing. Um, you may, or maybe you're in school or you went to school for something that is not really what you want to be doing. And so you'd like to learn something new or you'd like a new job or to start a new company. You just feel like you're sort of existing. I go to work, I get the check, but it's not really paying off in the sense that it makes you feel um, fulfilled. So there's like a loss of, of self. But it's work. And it's, it pay, it's paying the bills, apparently. And for those who are not working... You could feel some sort of loss of sense of self there and you're wanting to get back to work. And it's a, again, it's a good week to try um, or to jump back in if there's a way for you to do that. Feminine subconscious, we have the magician. Very nice. Major Arcana card one. Um, I just said jump back in. I'm going to show you something in a second. There is magic in the air. You can manifest everything you need to be successful. So again, if this is a great week to do any of these, you know, anything it is you want to do. Major Arcana card one, the magician represents the planet Mercury and the sign of Gemini. Where the sun is, where Mercury um, is right now. It's leaving. It's going into Taurus, but it's there right now. <laughs> And we have free will. This, I'm talking about jumping right in. Choices, decisions, contact, inaction, action. Nothing can be forced. So it's up to you, um, but you have everything you need to make it happen if you decide you want you know, to make something happen. It's a free will choice. Crowning. The lovers. Um, just, you know, the lovers used to be called the choice card. By, you know, people in, traditionally in the tarot. I think it may have been, actually, it may have been the choice card. I remember something I read a long time ago. And not the lovers, like, the, like they made, they changed the names of the lovers. In any case, Major Arcana card six, the lovers also represents the planet Mercury in the sign of Gemini. Um, and it is a card about love. Sometimes <laughs> it's also a card about choice, about a decision and a heart versus head decision. Usually when it is about a decision, uh, intimate relationships, carefully weigh your decisions, good health. Crowning this mirroring 
and sitting next to this ten of pentacles could definitely be about a relationship for some um and you know like genuine reciprocal seeing eye to eye heart to heart love um and for others needing to make a decision your mind may be telling you no especially you masculine and then maybe while you're in your head four of swords eight of swords but your heart your body is telling you yes and you want to do it and you may be in denial of that fact and again, it's time to move beyond these fears and to jump in. Uh, repressed emotions. Yeah, you're trying to hold your emotions back, trying to hold them in. Uh, rejection of something that you actually want. And being unable to see below the surface because you're too caught up in, again, something from the past or your head. Um, things that don't matter. You don't want to think about that. At the root of foundation, the Knight of Swords. He is intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options. You can come up with creative solutions. Knight of Swords, also most traditionally in the tarot, a Gemini. Um, can also be a Libra or an Aquarius. So someone likened to those traits or attributes that's not an air sign at all. Um, but it's also this is also a decision. It is news that is positive news, news you want to hear. In love and relationship, this is one of the sweep you off your feet cards, especially if you're single. You know, some love can come running in. Um, and it could even be a love that sticks around <laughs> as opposed to like the Knight of Wands, which can be a very temporary energy. It comes running in, it picks you up, you know, saves the day. And then, you know, after you're saved, it moves on to the next princess it's got to save. This one can stick around a little bit more. And if it's a decision, if you're having to make a decision, the answer is yes. So like, again, should I jump right in and go for it? Yes. Should I, you know, contact this soulmate? Yes. Should I get out of my head or forget about, you know, stuff that was from the past that doesn't matter anymore? Yes. And you see, there's more mirroring in this card too. Like this tree is a reflection is mirroring too. And it, this is crossing this other mirroring card. So this very much goes together for me. And it's about the masculine getting out of his head. But the answer is yes. And at the heart of the matter, we have another Hierophant or Unity. Hierophant crossing the Hierophant. Traditional viewpoints or methods, spiritual organizations, seek out mentors and like-minded friends. So this is a, a week, again, about connecting with people on our wavelength with whom we literally vibe. Their vibration is akin to our own. This could be about seeking your soul family, but really only like, you know, again, traditional meaning um, of the two of wands and that placement is just like one other person is really all you need to make the connection where it doesn't have to be the whole tribe. And then at the heart of the matter, um, also with higher family, we have compromise, which again is another meaning of temperance. The card that most directly represented us this week. Um, compromise is one of the meanings of temperance. Mutual understanding. So again, coming together, setting aside our differences, saying, forget about what happened before. Forget about what happened in the past. I'm ready to move beyond it and deciding to just come together anyway. Mutual understanding, flexibility, give and take, because that brings rewards. And that's what I have for you this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed the reading. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. I do appreciate it. And for those who want to stick around, I'm going to open my laptop and tell you what else is going on this week. The screen is just black. <laughs> Let's try this again. We got to turn it off again. That happened to me the other day. I had a Zoom to go on. And it was like an important Zoom. And this, oh, it was, my, it was a doctor's appointment. It was a doctor's appointment. And the screen was just black. So all kind of time was getting wasted. And finally, my doctor's office calls me. And I told him, I said, I'm having 
they text me first and I responded that I was having tech issues and they called me and they're like, do you want her to call you? You want the doctor to call you? And I said, yeah, she calls me. So we're talking, we're doing my appointment by phone instead of by video. And okay, laptop just came on. Why didn't it make a noise though? Oh, there it is. Um, um, we were doing it by phone instead of video, but since I legitimately had tried to get online, um, eventually, like as we're talking, she's like, oh, I just got a notification that you signed in. I'm like, I guess the computer continues to do its thing because I signed in so long ago, but okay. She's like, let's switch to Zoom. Uh, anywho, Mercury retrograde, what can I say? Um, got the computer on now and where is the calendar so on the muslim calendar we're not there's nothing we're going to talk about in the muslim calendar until july if i remember correctly um but definitely not this week um the hebrew calendar they continue to count the omer so we won't get into that and um, we're just going to go to the christian calendar and so I said, as I said, this reading starts on the 22nd, um, Sunday, tomorrow, and goes through the 28th. So on the 24th, which equals six, it's Mary's number, she has a feast day, um, and it is Mary, help of Christians. So I'll talk about that a little bit. And also on the 26th, eight um which is one of his numbers like august um like virgo which i think he is um as we've discussed many many times is the feast of the ascension of the lord i understand he's not everybody's lord that is the name of the feast day so for a little bit more on both of those i simply went to wikipedia mary help of christians Mary, Help of Christians, is a, a title of Mary, Mother of Jesus, based on a devotion associated with a feast day inscribed into the general Roman calendar on the 24th of May. Uh, a guy named John was the first person to use this Marian title in the year 345 A.D. John Bosco, which is a different John, this first guy was named John Christotum. Um, so this is John Bosco. He also propagated the devotion of Mary, help of Christians. This title is also associated with the defense of Christian Europe. Hmm. Maybe that has something to do with this week being her week. I don't know. The defense of Christian Europe. North, the north of Africa. The north of Africa, that's like Ethiopia, Morocco, North Africa. Hmm. Uh, Egypt and the Middle East. Yeah, okay. Maybe where Mary's from, Palestine. Something was going on in Pakistan this week. Was I sound real ignorant right now. Not remembering what it was. Something was going on in Pakistan this week. I mean, in addition to what's always going on. Oh, God. I have to um, I have to look it up. Anyway, um, all of these areas recognize or celebrate Mary, help of Christians, and have since the Middle Ages. So in the year 1561, or... 671, like June 1971 or 1917, uh, Lady of Fatima. I don't know why I'm bringing our Lady of Fatima into this, but she's coming up to me. Um, 1571, during the expansion of the Islamic Ottoman Empire intended to invade Christian Europe, Pope Pius V... Maybe like these hierophants, Major Arcana card five. Pope Pius V invoked Christian armies and its victory achieved was consequently attributed to the intercession of Mary, help of Christians. 
Pope Leo the 13th. Her other number. Well, maybe that's why I was feeling 61371 or 61317 um, would be Our Lady of Fatima. I don't know. Pope Leo the 13th signed and granted a pontifical degree of canon coronation towards the Turin image on the 13th of February in 1903, which is also 13. My great grandmother was born in 1903. Uh, the coronation ceremony was performed on the 17th of May in 1903. 17th. I was just saying 671 or 617 is what I was seeing. I don't know. She's trying to tell me something about maybe she'll come more clear. Because like when I was off camera, she very clearly told me this is her week. You know. Um, so maybe she'll talk to me some more when I'm by myself, <laughs> not with you guys. I don't know. Um, but anyway, something happened in the year 1903 on the 17th of May. She appeared again. And so now she is permanently enshrined within the Basilica as Mary Help of Christians. They call it the Basilica of Mary Help of Christians. And this is located in a place called Turin. And this thing goes on and on. It talks about a lot of stuff, but I'm going to leave it there and move on to the Feast of the Ascension. This is again the Ascension of Jesus. The Feast of the Ascension of Jesus Christ, also called Ascension Day or Ascension Thursday, or sometimes Holy Thursday, commemorates the Christian belief of the bodily ascension of Jesus into heaven. It is one of the um, feasts of Christian churches, ranking with the feasts of the Passion of Easter and the Pentecost, following the accounts of Acts 1 3, another 13. I think 13 was important this week. I don't know what they're trying to say, though. Um, so, follow, following the accounts of Acts 1 3, that the risen Jesus appeared for 40 days prior to his ascension. Ascension Day is traditionally celebrated on Thursday, the 40th day of Easter, although some Christian denominations have moved the observance to the following Sunday. In the Catholic Church in the United States, the day of observance varies in, according to the ecclesiastical province. And then this too goes on and on if you want to read more about it, but I'm going to start stop there and move on to the planetary calendar because there's a few things happening this week on there too. So beginning with the first day, May 22nd at 2.43 p.m., we have the last quarter moon, one degree Pisces. Then also on May 22nd at 9.15 p.m., Mercury retrograde enters Taurus. So again, it leaves Gemini, enters Taurus. On May 24th, the same day as Mary's feast day, we have Vesta, which is an asteroid that's also like a mother energy, a mother asteroid. It enters the sign of Pisces. So that's very Queen of Cups because it's mother and it's like unconditional love and emotion, Pisces. That happens at 5.38 a.m., Vesta um, will be zero degrees Pisces. Also on May 24th at 7.17 p.m. So there's the 71 and there's the 17 combined together. I'm not sure what that she's trying to tell me about that, but I see it. Mars enters Aries, zero degrees Aries. And then lastly for this week, May 28th at 10.46 a.m. Venus the planet and goddess of love enters Taurus, which she rules at zero degrees. 
Um, so for a little more about some of these transits, I went to www.tarot.com. First, Mercury retrograde in Taurus. Because Taurus rules money and the material world, Mercury's retrograde through Taurus could bring about mishaps or miscommunications around your finances or other assets. If you're trying to make more money, asking for a raise during Mercury retrograde is not advised. It would also be unwise to open any new credit cards, make major purchases, or to sign contracts while Mercury retrogrades through Taurus, but it's not all bad news. Mercury retrograding Taurus is a great time to rethink and rework your finances. Revisit money-making ideas from the past. So again, if you had any money-making ideas, this is the time to, to act on them. And to get all your ducks in a row with your current financial situation to the where Mercury turns direct, which is not long from now. It's June 3rd um, in Gemini. So it'll be out of Taurus on top of that. You'll be ready to start making the changes that you've been planning. Moving on to Mars in Aries. So Mars will be going to Aries, which it rules. Mars in Aries, active, exciting, motivated. Mars is the planet that rules Aries, which means both of their energies are very similar and very in sync with one another. This is not a confusing time when you aren't sure which way to turn. Mars in Aries is a great time of confidence, increased drive, and powerful beginnings. Mars' transit through Aries is an amazing time of initiation and activity. If there's something you've been hesitant to start, masculine, Mars and Aries will help you to finally get the ball rolling. A feminine too, actually, I guess with this. Mars is the planet of action, and when he's in Aries, he's on top of the world. He's strong, independent, and fierce. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, that will stand in his way. No matter what he wants to accomplish, Mars in Aries is always triumphant. Fiery Aries is a cardinal sign characterized by immediacy, activity, and pioneering. So Mars fits perfectly into this fast-paced environment. Because there is little resistance during Mars in Aries, it almost feels like our obstacles melt away. But it's not like they've totally disappeared. We're just too driven and confident to be daunted by them. Even though we'll probably face these obstacles at some point down the road. Like how um, our overall energy from the last spread with the seven of pentacles. You know, things coming around. There's, that's not the point of Mars in Aries though. This transit is not about planning. It's about moving forward, regardless of what may stand in your way later. We'll want to blaze trails, push ourselves, and tone our bodies and minds. Maybe that's why I was feeling about the, the losing a weight or going on a diet and stuff or exercising. We'll be more likely to do things we've never done during this transit. Mars and Aries are both about trying, not about winning. Success comes from participation rather than conquest. And while this incredible surge in energy can be beneficial, it can also become a challenge in our lives and relationships because we're less concerned with consequences. Impulsive behavior is likely. Like, I like it. <laughs> As a Gemini, I like the impulsive behavior. Um, we may find that we experience more outbursts of anger. Uh, that's not good or that our direct approach rubs others the wrong way. Okay, that kind of sucks too. But Mars and Aries makes us all feel like it's my way or the highway. Oops, okay. Which means we aren't willing to meet others halfway. Okay, well that, we know that's not true. We got com Well, maybe it is true, we don't want to, but we got compromised at the heart of the matter. So we know we need to meet others halfway this week, despite what Mars and Aries has to say about it. Mars and Aries makes us all feel like it's my way or the highway. We aren't, we aren't willing to meet halfway. And we could end up butting heads more frequently due to the aggressive energy in the air. So it's something to keep in mind. And then again, remember, compromise is the way to go this week. Lastly, we have Venus in Taurus. that we're going to talk about. 
Venus in Taurus, sensual, romantic, and patient. Venus is the planet of love and beauty and traditional traditional rules. Both and it both it rules also both Taurus and Libra. She's the planet that's concerned with pleasure, whether that's pleasure in love or our physical world. Tracking which zodiac sign Venus is in can help you to see which cosmic factors are influencing you and your significant other. Matters of the heart are a mystery, but passion planet Venus can give us a few clues. There's another important expression of Venus in Taurus too, money. These two appreciate the finer things in life, like good food, beautiful scenery, and luxury items. Taurus represents Venus's more tactical delights and the things two lovers can enjoy together. When this loving planet enters the earthy sign of Taurus, we are reminded of just how beautiful the world can be. Venus's presence in this patient zodiac sign signals a time of simplifying complexities, getting down to fundamentals, and rebuilding relationships from the ground up. This is an ideal time to bring love and money issues out into the open so that they can be dealt with directly and easily. Dating is delightful when Venus is in Taurus. It encourages us to slow down, live in the moment, and find ways to enjoy the company of someone special. Maybe you and your sweetheart will cuddle up and watch a great movie, open a good bottle of wine, or feast on something delicious. This is the time when you'll both be in the mood to indulge your senses. Taurus is a security-oriented sign that seeks stability over torrid passion. That means when this planet and sign get together, we're more drawn to commitment than quick affairs or casual dating. If you want a relationship or if you've had your eye on someone for a while, this could be the time when you decide to take things to the next level. There's a possibility that our partnerships could get bogged down with the infamous stubbornness Taurus is known for when Venus is in Taurus. This is one drawback of this comic coupling that everyone should be mindful of. If you're in a relationship or on track toward commitment, this might be a time when it's more difficult for the two of you to move forward as a couple. Compromise can be difficult, with compromise coming up again, can be difficult when you're dealing with the bull. If you're single, and look, it's on top of the, the card that represents Taurus, and it's crossing the card that represents Taurus, right? The two hierophants. That's so interesting. If you're in a relationship on track to a commitment, this might be a time when it's more difficult for the two of you to move forward as a couple. Compromise can be difficult when you're dealing with the bull. If you're single, this is a time when you'll feel some internal resistance to opening yourself up and letting in someone new. Remember, a little bit of flexibility can go a long way. And on that note, I will bid you guys adieu. Again, uh, thank you for watching. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. I do appreciate it. Namaste.